Friday again, and today I'm going to be working on the coot axle, which I believe front and rear axles are the same. But I got this thing pulled apart, and I started noticing um, we've got a lot of movement right in here, you can see back and forth. And talking to a gentleman named Tom um, on one of the coot forms, he goes by Coot Tom, and he was saying that this is only supposed to have about five thousandths of play. So this is this is real bad, and so. Um, he sent me this stuff in the mail. We've got the service manual and some parts. We'll look at those in a minute. But uh, I was going through this, and from what he told me on the phone, we're gonna we're gonna back this nut out. So let's start on that now. If you want to come over here. So this threaded piece right here, which has been kind of mangled from before, I kind of cleaned up the threads a bit. But um, this will thread in and out and put pressure on this bearing right here and so there's a side to side adjustment that you've got to have on the axle that's down below and we'll get to that and you see it's, it's kind of tight because there's so much play in there so we're going to take this jam nut right here and back that off and i already went through with a with a wire brush that's down here and clean these threads up a little bit. So we'll back that up. Now he mentioned to wrap your pliers with some with some tape to keep from marring these threads. Well, where these are already really messed up, I'm just gonna turn on them and see if we can get that to turn. Oh yeah, that's freed right up, not a big deal. So this looks like it might take a little bit. It's getting tighter. Oh yeah, you can see it. You can see right here, right in here. It's actually moving. This piece right here is sliding in, so that's a, it's putting pressure against everything. So yeah, we're getting there. And five thousandths play back and forth. That's getting close to ten. What we're gonna do is get this tightened up here. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is. I don't know where I'm gonna do this at, and going off an angle, this ain't gonna be exact, but I think what I can do is come in here. Um, not exactly sure, let's just do this. There's really no way to get that down in there. Okay, so we're gonna set it here, and we'll pull this back. So we're looking at almost six thousandths right there. So that's not that's not too terrible. We're gonna leave it right there. And uh, oh yeah, that's definitely that's definitely helped us out there. That's go just a little bit tighter on that. Still here, we got a little bit of movement in there. We're pretty close to five there. We're gonna call that good. So now I'm gonna tighten this jam nut back up on here. This will keep that from backing back out. I don't have a spanner wrench for this, but uh, the old flathead screwdriver works when you're in a pinch. Um, I'm gonna have to read through that book and see there. I'm sure there's some torque specs on all this. Okay, so that's, oh yeah, that's way better. Just a little bit of movement compared to what that was. I asked him on the phone, I says, hey, that, that moves about an eighth of an inch, maybe even a quarter. He says, no, that needs to be closer to five. So that was easier than I thought it was gonna be. 
Okay, so let me show you the parts he sent out. All right, out. you guys, got digging into the book a little bit here. Um, got back into here around page 53 or so. It's it's starting to talk about our axles. Uh, we've got our, our worm gear here and our ring gear here. Um, fluid levels. I'm going to have to dig into this a little bit, but it looks like um, bronze worm gear installation. Okay, here's our alignment. We're going to have to go through that. Now, he was talking about... From the ring gear up to the worm gear, you've got to have a little bit of a, uh, oh yeah, right here. He was saying there's a tool that goes down in here that they had, and, and then there's one of these worm gears that was a one inch, and then one that's an, an inch and a half, and I think you slide a piece in there like this that's got a notch on it for the inch or the inch and a half one. I'm not exactly sure. I'll read through here, but this what this does is there's some shims that go on. So when you put, okay, here's our hubs, or the three whole flanges that, yeah, the threads are in there backwards, but uh, they'll go in here like this, you know, obviously the nuts go on this other side, and so this recessed area here, and the bearing here, when they're pressed in tight on both sides, that's what that flat, that's what that pushes up against, and supposedly, there's a gasket that goes here, probably right around 20, 25 thousandths thick. When you get everything sandwiched together, it's supposed to center up on here. Now, if it's not center, what it says is they come with the sh these shims. And this one was shimmed. I've already got this one pulled apart, and there was some shims in here. And it actually says, I believe it's talked about the color on them and what each of one of those were. So I think that's what that tool is there. I'm gonna have to dig into this, but that tool right there is when you get everything tightened down, you're supposed to be able to slide this down the side of the ring gear and then check with feeler gauges on both sides of this, you know, flip this over to this side, this to this side, check with feeler gauges until you have your worm gear centered up inside there. So that's what we're gonna shoot for. Um, I'm not gonna get into that tonight, but uh, that was adjusting the worm gear back and forth here. Um, I'm glad I called him. He was a really helpful individual. Tom has owned over 70, maybe even over 75 coots in his life. And you can find him on the forums. Um, you punch in coot, uh, coot forums, and he'll be in there. Coot Tom is what he goes by. And he's got a bunch of this stuff he sells. Um, he sent us out. I broke, I broke one of the flanges. And, you know, this is stuff that he's had off of the old coots that he's had in the past. So I broke one of those. He sent us one of those. Um, some new seals because there are some seals that go in. Those seals should go on this side right here. And that's what keeps your water and stuff from getting into your axle. And I also had to cut one of these off of this side. This is the piece that goes out here on your axle tube. And it was so rusted on there and welded to itself. I had it cutting torch and cut that off um, in fact you can see just a little tiny pit right there where I was blown through the cutting torch that's not gonna matter right there though not a big deal so that's the adjustment on the worm gear for for now that's a little bit of uh, forward progress now I've got this amazing little manual I can go through and I can and get this thing put back together right and stay tuned for next Friday um, hopefully we'll uh, get a little more further progress on this and catch you guys up on Friday but uh, definitely like subscribe and stay tuned this is going to be an ongoing series on this coot if you like this kind of thing definitely subscribe and uh, you guys have a good night take it easy